In this video, you are going to learn how I created this animation. All right, so how do you go from this cube to this final environment? This is a problem you often come up against as a 3D artist. This overwhelming feeling of there's so much ahead of me and I don't know where to start. The way that you can work through this is by dividing up your reference into separate layers. I went ahead and grabbed some cool forest images from Pexels and then got to work drawing out all the pieces in front of me. It's kind of like doing a reverse puzzle. We have this base mossy ground here, then shrubs poking through and creating a nice fuzzy forest floor. Then we can see some various saplings and small trees scattered around. And finally, we have our large pines towering above. Okay, so now that we have the simple puzzle pieces laid out for our environment, it's important that we add further detail and information to each layer. Analyzing my reference carefully, I'll create a list of plants and assets we'll need from the bottom up. First layer, moss. Second layer, taller moss. Third layer, debris like nuts, bark, and pine needles. Fourth layer, various kinds of shrubs. Fifth layer, big fallen trees and larger sticks. Then from there, we have saplings and small trees. And finally, we'll write down the pines. And there's our forest floor. We haven't even opened Blender yet, and we already have a much clearer idea of how we'd create this forest. At this point, I am feeling confident. I know what I'm gonna do, but how do I actually do it? Well, let's go ahead and open Blender. At this stage, you might be tempted to just slap a big terrain in here and start throwing plants around, but it's really important to take your time and develop all the individual systems first. We need to compile and organize all of the assets we need and then develop a realistic, harmonious ecosystem that we can then implement into the final larger environment. All right, so first step, compiling and organizing our assets. I sorted through libraries like Grassweld, Plant Library, and Quixel Megascans to find the things I needed. Grassweld and Quixel do cost money, but the Plant Library is completely free to use from the Blender Market. Links below for all that. I highly encourage you to take your time during this process, thoroughly analyze what kind of plants you have in your reference, and try to find similar plants in these libraries. Here's everything that I collected. Moss, debris, sticks, pine needles, we have shrubs, and other various small plants. Now it's time to use all of these assets and create our ecosystem. I call it an ecosystem. Really, it's just a miniature version of the environment where we can test the sizes, densities, and locations of plants. First, add a plane, then a new geometry node setup. Geometry nodes is how we'll actually scatter the plants on our plane. The basic scattering setup for geometry nodes goes like this. First, add a distribute points on faces, then an instance on points. Plug the rotation into the rotation of the instance on points and then add a rotate Euler in. Now add a random value, change it to vector, and set all of the values to zero except for the Z axis. Now plug that in. Then a noise texture plugged into a color ramp and plug that into the scale. Now all you have to do is drag your collection in or the object in, plug it into the instance, and you have some scattering going on. Make sure to add a join geometry at the end of all of this so that you can actually see your plane. All right, let's start with the moss first. Pull your collection into geometry nodes and plug it in. Now I'll adjust the moss's values. I'm using a noise texture plugged into the scale like I just showed you to create a really organic distribution. This is the same technique I use for almost every plant. Now I'll run a quick render and it's looking great. Now let's do the second moss variation, adjust and render. This little variation here is really helpful for realism. It's all about layering. Now I'll repeat this step for the debris and the shrubs. And here is what my final mini ecosystem looks like. Honestly, I'm super happy with how it looks so far, and I think it'll make for a great forest floor. Next, let's find the trees that we want. In the past, I've created my own custom trees using SpeedTree, but this time I felt like using some excellent ones I found online. These pines created by Istwood on CG Trader will work perfectly. I'll import them into my scene, adjust the materials to fit my needs, and bam, these are awesome. Now that we have developed our library with all of the assets we need, it's time to create the final scene and import everything in. So, empty viewport. What do we do? We need the terrain, of course, so let's drop in a plane and add some detail using the displacement modifier. Great. 
Next, let's import our mini ecosystem and apply it to our terrain. The great thing about geometry nodes is even if you develop a system on a small object first, it will transfer all of the attributes properly onto your large object. Now let's set up a new geometry node system for the trees and experiment with different placements until we find something we like. This arrangement of trees feels pretty realistic to me. In order to have the trees blow in the wind, I'll add a simple deform modifier to each tree and then animate the angle using a noise modifier. Now we have this. To animate the individual branches blowing in the wind, I'll first weight paint everything but the trunk and then add a displacement modifier with a cloud texture. Set the displacement modifier to object and for the object, we'll use an infinitely rotating empty. Now just set the vertex group to the weight paint you created and the animation will only affect the branches. Perfect. For the lighting, I'm using a blender sky texture and a big cube surrounding my forest with a principled volume as the material. This will give us atmosphere. If you'd like sunbeams peeking through the trees, you can turn up the anisotropy value. All right, so after a few days of configuring the scattering system, as well as the lighting, I ended up with this pretty awesome looking forest. I shut my computer down for the night, feeling super proud. And the next day I woke up to pretty insane news in the digital world. Sora AI. If you haven't heard about this yet, basically it's new AI video technology that's capable of creating some pretty stunning, hyper-realistic results. At first I was thinking, great, new AI developments, which is something I'm sort of uneasy about already. But the more I watched, the more I realized, wait a minute, this is clearly going to replace what I do. Have the years that I've spent learning 3D gone to waste because this technology will just be able to create everything that I can quicker. And now how am I gonna find the motivation to finish my forest environment with all these thoughts in my head? This kind of reflection, even though it's super difficult, is really important to figuring out why you do something. Ultimately, I don't do 3D because of the single image at the end. I do it because I enjoy the process. I get gratification from being creative and designing all the little pieces behind a project. And that is something that AI will never be able to replace. So for now, at least, I'm gonna keep doing what I'm doing. But we can't be in complete denial. So let's go ahead and check out some of AI's features. I'm imagining deep inside my forest, there's an old cabin, a shack of sorts. And Photoshop has a pretty cool new AI powered feature called generative fill that might very well be able to visualize this for me. I'll just highlight the area I'd imagine my cabin being and type in old cabin. And right off the bat, I actually love this idea. This AI generated image will now serve as my reference for my future cabin. So how do we make this cabin? Well, I actually experimented with a few different options. I ended up going with the third, but let's take a look at each one. The first option is build everything from scratch. I took this approach when creating my abandoned house in a previous video. Basically, model everything by hand, then using either Substance Painter or Blender, create the materials from scratch and paint on the details manually. This gives you the most creative flexibility, but it also takes up a ton of time. Not really in the mood for that. Second option, it's kind of the middle ground approach, and it's similar to Legos. I downloaded a bunch of pieces like logs and sticks from Quixel Megascans and then inside Blender, I'll assemble them together to form a cabin. This is actually pretty fun and it still gives you a good amount of creative freedom. I ended up being a little bit disappointed with my custom cabin. Here's a render of the forest with it inside. I mean, it looks all right, but I was just going for something a little better. I decided to browse through Sketchfab to find some inspiration and I stumbled across this 3D scanned cabin that was completely free to download. It's always been an internal struggle for me. Like, how do I use an object in my render that I didn't create myself? Doesn't that defeat the purpose? But in this moment, it's important to keep your priorities in mind. Why am I even creating this environment? Is it because I want to create a custom cabin? Or is it because I want to create an entire cinematic animation? It's to create a cinematic animation. Do filmmakers in real life worry about having not created the world that they film in? Of course not. So I'm gonna take advantage of this awesome asset and thanks to Vester's deal for providing it. I tossed it into my scene, adjusting the materials and also scattering debris on the roof to make it more realistic. And here is my result, super awesome looking. 
So now things are looking pretty sweet and I'm actually at the stage where I'm ready to move on from environment creation and get into camera animation. In order to achieve this realistic handheld look, I'll use an iPhone app called CamTrack AR. This allowed me to quickly record my own hand movements and then import them into Blender. I didn't even know this tech existed before this project and I think it's pretty cool. It's just like instant realism. If you'd like to learn more about this process and a ton of other behind the scenes details and tutorials, make sure to jump over to my Patreon where I have an extended breakdown of this project. Thanks. All right, let's get into the creepiness. Let's get into how I made all of this. First, the time moving forward sequence. This was actually super easy. All I did was animate the sun height and rotation, and with the atmosphere we added, it automatically has these cool sunbeams moving through the forest that really enhance the effect. Next, once the sun goes down, our flashlight clicks on. The flashlight is literally just a spot lamp, nothing fancy. I did edit the atmosphere for the night sequence so that the beam of light from the flashlight feels heavier, just basically turning down the anisotropy value and turning up the density. Okay, so now for the deer. I found this awesome model on Sketchfab by PigHunter15, and I edited, ed, edited, God, I always have a problem with that word, edited the model to add these ribs poking through and painted it to feel more gory. Now we have this zombie deer dude. I repeated the same camera animation technique I used for the daytime sequence and hand animated the flashlight to follow wherever my camera was looking. Now let's render. Here is the precise moment that young 3D artist Cove would be so frustrated at this render. Why does it look so boring? Why doesn't it look like this? The answer is color grading. I'll toss my render into DaVinci Resolve and by using blurs, zooms, blooms, vignetting and color curves, I can slowly adjust my render to feel more realistic and alive. And here is the result. Hey everyone, thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed and got something out of this video. You might have noticed that I haven't uploaded in a long time. And that is because I was so hard at work behind the scenes creating a course on urban environments in Blender. This course is absolutely packed with awesome designing, modeling, and texturing workflows. And I'll take you step by step from a very basic idea like this one to a highly detailed an epic city environment. This course took me over a year to create, working full time, so you already know the production value is through the roof. If you're interested in jumping in, or at the very least supporting what I do, make sure to head over to cgboost.com urban. Thanks guys, and I'll see you in the next one.